Okay, hi everybody. Welcome, Thursday night, nine o'clock. I was supposed to have a baby. Insta Live series. We are hashtag talking away the taboo. And I am thrilled this evening to bring Linny from Linspired Living to be joining us this evening. She, um, she's really, I think, a force with which to be reckoned here in this space and I came across her work just really serendipitously. I, um, you know, one of the things that um, I try to do with this space is connect to as many people as possible to um, to try to um, foster the conversation and get people to think more and to, hi, hi, to, um, you just here now for five seconds um, to get people to think more and to really to to connect them with um, different personalities and different different people in this space in order to be able to help them more so I I, I was so you know I was just so struck by your when I when I came across the first post where the first time you ever started talking about your experience here I was just so struck by just the raw emotion and openness with which you talked about everything you were going through. And I said, I need to have a conversation with this person. I need. And so here we are. I mean, we had a, a conversation already, but now we're doing it just with a bit of an audience. So it's all good. How are you? Good. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate your kindness. No, oh, look, I, I think that, you know, you and I are very similar in that we're trying to reach people and trying to help people and trying to have everyone feel just a little bit less alone. Just you're doing it, doing it right in the middle of everything that you're going through. And I'm working at it from the back end and saying, I, I've done that already. It was horrible and hell, but now... I'm going to try to help. So enough about me. Please tell everybody who you are, wh what what you're all about. I mean, not everything, but you know, share <laughs> share share a little bit and and tell everybody who you are and why. Help them fall in love with you in the way that I did. Also, <laughs> you're so cute. Okay, so first things first. Can you see me, or is the lighting yes. off? Like, is that no, better, or is it fine? Good. You're, you're great. You're great. I can never figure out the lighting. I have my own ring light and I just basically, I, I don't know. This is, yeah. This is so not is it okay me. like that or do I take it off? On or off? Is that, you tell me what's better. I, I, I think actually off just because it's, it's okay. a little bit more natural, but. Okay. It's so funny because when I see myself, I look so dark <laughs> to my, to me, it looks like dark here. <laughs> I, I, and you look perfect here when, and when I'm in, every time I try to find a different space where I know I can have quiet and in this room where I'm in my husband's office, the lights are coming from above in a very sort of piercing way. And I have these weird halos, but it's all good. <laughs> I, no still, I think you look beautiful. That. <laughs> yeah. you, you look beautiful. Um, well, first, thank you so much for giving me, allowing me the space to come on here and tell my story. Um, I feel so empowered by women such as yourself that allow others to do that. Um, because like you said, I think we're on a mission to help women feel less alone. Um, so the more I can do things like this, the more I feel like I'm able to touch different people's lives. Um, I first shared about my story, um, which is revolving around miscarriages in uh, April. And since then, I've made so many connections and met so many wonderful people on Instagram, uh, something I never thought would happen. I mean, that was not, I just didn't imagine it going the way that it's gone in the last few months. You know, I was hoping to meet a few women who could, um, you know, understand me and relate with me and we could become friends. But uh, the amount of support that you find on here through women who have been through similar things is incredible. And it's so nice to see that we live in a world that when something like this happens, 
it's the sense of camaraderie, you know, where women are like, okay, let me help pick you up and get you through this. Um, and yeah. I've received that. Yeah, and I've received that, and now I want to do the same for others um, now that I'm feeling better about everything. Um, so w walk all of us through the beginning. You know, you found the guy. <laughs> you, you know, you got married, and, like, did you, you know, right away decide you wanted to start a family? Like, t talk us through sort of the beginning and, and how all of this started. I love that question, Amy, because I think it's so easy to forget that. And I think it's the first time someone's asked me that in a really long time. I always get asked, so where did your miscarriage or your you know, infertility journey begin? Um, but I don't often talk about the part about meeting my husband and how that's gone. And it, just you saying that to me makes me like excited, you know, to talk about that. It's something nice. It's something I have good memories of, you know. <laughs> right. Because you know what? But I, I always think like, you know, we all have dreams and visions about what our life is going to look like, right? Like from when the time that we're very little, we think, okay, I want to have this kind of house and this kind of city. And, you know, like I, I personally have always dreamed of having like, you know, white china, like I, I wanted that, those kinds of dishes and these kinds of glasses, like those were my dreams. I wanted, you know, kids who were this age, this age, this age and this age, like, I, you know, we all have these dreams. And for many of us, those dreams actually start to become reality when we find that person. And yeah. for some of us, it's before marriage, some of us it's after marriage, but whenever that is. And, and, but we think that, we're going to start like living those dreams right away. And, and then when that doesn't happen, I think that's also a big piece of the, the struggle and the disappointment. It's the, it's not only the, the fact that you can have a baby, but it's, it's the, the crushing nature of all of those dreams and those hopes all at the same time. So I always love to start with like, tell me who you are and tell me yeah. about where, where you started and, and, and then we'll get there. Hi, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you're so right. And it, it kind of helps me remember who I am aside from all of these things, you know, because I've very much created one of my identities in this, but I'm a lot more, you know, um, so my husband and I met, um, I'm going to be 34 now, and we met when I was 30. So it's not like super long, but it, it's in a good way. It feels like it's been 10 years. Um, and we we met, uh, it was, it. we always say it was meant to be um, because we both, we met in a different state, actually. We, we live in California, but when we met, we were in Arizona. And um, he was there for his friend's bachelor party, and I was just there with some friends. And I was grumpy. I didn't feel like being there. My friends forced me to go. I just was not in a good mood that day or that weekend. And I, it was literally like a last minute decision. Like we were supposed to get there Friday morning and Thursday, my friend said, you're coming, you're going to come, you're not going to regret it. I'm going to make sure that you don't regret it. And now looking back, I think, oh, my goodness, I wouldn't have met my husband. Um, but so I, I went with them and, you know, was forced on this trip, got there and um, had a great time. And then I think it was so uh, Friday night or Saturday night, um, I went to a bar and um, he, I, it was the wrong bar. I wasn't supposed to be at that bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually looking at the sign of, oh, wait a minute, that's not the right name. <laughs> and just when I did that, he came up to me and completely distracted me and started talking to me. And we just hit it off and ended up like hanging out the whole weekend. And he was so nice. And I just really enjoyed his company, he made me laugh. And I felt like I had known him forever. It was just this instant like connection you know just this familiarity um and so um we got he said he said when we were uh, on vacation he said we're gonna date 
I'm going to date you when we get back. And I was like, okay, we'll see. You know, <laughs> so I was, you know, he seems like almost too good to be true. You know, right. especially in LA, it's hard to find guys that are like real and serious, you know? Totally. Um, but he said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call you. You'll see. And it was actually going to be my birthday soon. And he said, I'm going to take you out for your birthday. And um, sure enough, I think like the day after he called me the, that that night, he texted me and made sure I got home safe from the trip and just kept in touch. And, um, you know, just never stopped doing his part. And the relationship actually moved pretty quickly. So we met on a weekend trip. And then um, we went on like an official date a week later, um, or, you know, the next weekend. And he um, told me during our first date, real date, um, that he was Jewish and that it was important for him that his wife was Jewish as well. And, you know, he said, so I want to know because I really I like you a lot. I know it's premature, but I just don't want to waste your time. And is that something you're even open to? And I, I'm actually a very spiritual person. My family's not you know, religious. And so that wouldn't have been an issue. And so I said, Okay, let's, you know, we'll talk about it if the time gets there. And now I'm Jewish. <laughs> I've come <converted. laughs> Thank you. And um, yeah, our relationship, actually, you know, I really appreciate what you said, because our relationship actually was very much a fairy tale for me. And I'm proud to say that because, you know, meeting somebody when I was 30 meant that I've had other relationships and other experiences, and they weren't always great. You know, I, he, he has been my Prince Charming, but I know what it's like to, to not have that, you know? Amazing. Yeah, so it's just a breath of fresh air and everything just went so well and so smoothly. And um, he proposed, uh, pretty quickly. I think it was like a year after we, we had met, he proposed on a hot or right before getting on a hot air balloon ride. Um, <laughs> he said he didn't do it on the balloon ride because he was afraid <laughs> because I'm so clumsy with my hands. I like talk a lot with my hands and he was scared. I'd be like, ah, I'm like, knock it over. <laughs> so, um, He's very smart he, also. <laughs> yeah. Very smart. And so he proposed right before getting on, and, and um, it was just beautiful. Um, and then I actually got pregnant by surprise, um, maybe like five months after the engagement, uh, while we were planning the official wedding. And it was, I was actually really happy that it was a surprise because I can be kind of OCD about things, and I knew that. I didn't want to plan, you know, getting pregnant. I didn't want to worry about all the stuff that goes into trying. Um, so I thought, great, this is amazing. And, um, and then at 10 weeks, I got that dreaded appointment, you know, with the doctor where they said that they could no longer find a heartbeat. And um, it's interesting when they said that to me, I, I didn't believe it. I needed a second opinion. She, it, it like happened so fast. I went in and she was like, you know, with Wanda and maybe five, 10 minutes. And that was it, you know, okay, sorry, honey, I'll give you a few minutes. And then came back in and was like, so we're going to schedule you for a DNC in like, like tomorrow. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need time to process. And I, I'm it's actually something I'm really proud of myself. I've, I've always been, um, I've always challenged my doctor and kind of like kicked back, like pushed back, you know, um, I don't know what it is. I'm just at a place in my life. I haven't always been like that. You know, I, 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 I used to be a people pleaser and I'm grateful that I've escaped that. You know, I used to be very like too polite, you know, the person who says I'm sorry a lot and okay, whatever. And something's just come over me from the beginning, um, you know, where I just said, no, I need a minute to think about this. I want a second opinion. I want to see if like, can you, can we have another specialist look at me? Um, and of course I did the Google searching and found stories that sometimes um, your development is off because they've miscalculated. Right. Uh, and so I was just hanging on to hope, you know, just, just hoping that everything would be okay. And we actually had a wedding to go to in Mexico um, the day after that, the day after the ultrasound. 
Yeah. And I went. Um, and in hindsight, I'm glad that I did that. It was a great experience. Um, and it kept my mind busy. Um, but that's where I was sitting by the beach on my phone, Googling, <laughs> you know, all the ways that she could be wrong. Um, but then we got back and uh, it was confirmed. And everything seemed pretty normal at that time. Um, I had the DNC and I thought I recovered pretty quickly. I didn't even experience pain from the DNC, which I thought was great. You know, I thought, okay, good. And I, I'm very regular. And so I got my period, you know, three, I get it every 21 days and I got it three weeks later and I felt great. I felt like, okay, that's at least my body's bouncing back, you know, it happens, you know, so next time we'll be better. But then, um, couple months, as the months went on, I started to have bleeding. Um, more and more and this is after my doctor had right in between your in between your cycle you're saying like yeah irregularly yeah and this is after i had had my you know uh post post op to confirm that everything was okay so um my doctor thought it was my period and that my body was just adjusting and not knowing any better i believed her um and so i just went through periods of like a few months of constantly on and off bleeding. And then eventually um, I lost so much blood um, that I passed out at home because it happened slowly. It wasn't like all in one day and some days it would stop and I would think, Oh, it's going to get better. And then it would start again a few days later and on and off, on and off. Um, And I think I just hung on to that hope of it's going to get better. It's going to go away. But it didn't and I yeah that that was extremely traumatic so I I was at home I passed out I was downstairs cooking and I yeah by myself and I had left my phone upstairs for whatever reason and I um started to feel really weak and like my hands were getting tingly and I just I remember thinking like something's wrong something's wrong and then I just like looked up and that was it. I was on the ground. I have no idea how long I was on the ground for. Mm-hmm. I just remember like hearing my subconscious talk to me and telling me like to get up. And I managed to grab my phone and call an ambulance and they came to get me. And I had two blood transfusions. I had lost two liters of blood, which is like a Coca-Cola bottle. And I'm five feet tall and 108 pounds. So very You're tiny. Yeah. yeah, for two liters of blood to have left my body, like, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, my doctor at that time still thought that it was a fluke. She said, you know, um, I think maybe there was something that we left inside. I'm so sorry, um, but we're going to have to do another DNC for the same pregnancy, but it's going to make it all better. Um, and so we did that and um, a few months went by and I was, I was traumatized for a while. <laughs> yeah, at that time I, I went through a period um, and I feel bad saying this because you know, I would never want my kids, you know, I get to have them someday <laughs> to feel, to hear this from me, but I did have time where I just didn't know if I could do that again. It was terrifying. You know, the thought of, well, what if this happens again? What if, you know, there's another fluke and I lose more blood or, God forbid, lose my life? You know, I just was terrified. Um, I, not even you know, so much. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I interrupted you. No, not. I was just going to say not even so much for miscarriage as much as, like, my life. I was scared to lose my life. Of course. Look, I, I you know, I, I think when especially when we when when someone goes through a miscarriage it's it's not only the fact that you're losing a baby it's also the fact that your body is functioning in a way that that you don't understand like sometimes you know there are obvious explanations right like you know you know that the pregnancy was not a healthy pregnancy or you know that there's some hormone level that's off like th- there are some times where you have an answer but when you don't have an answer it just creates this whole mistrust of your body and what exactly is going on. And that, I, that 
totally erodes like all of the, your confidence and and you get you just don't know how to trust anything or 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 what what's coming next so the fact that you were traumatized makes perfect sense the fact that you weren't sure if you wanted to do any of this again because forget about a baby but because of your own life i mean it makes perfect sense it's it this is a trauma yeah absolutely and it's you know all these um journeys that we go through are traumatizing in their own way but you just never expect your first pregnancy to go like that you know i've waited my whole life to meet my prince charming you know and and start a family i i waited a long time to set my life up to be able to do that and then the time came and i knew that so many women can relate to that you know just feeling like okay we're ready and right and then and then. it's hard yeah um so uh it actually took i've had three miscarriages now right. um which is why I'm, i've been diagnosed with recurrent pregnancy loss and it's important for me to say this because a lot of people say miscarriage is common and they're right one miscarriage is common maybe even two miscarriages are common three misca miscarriages are not common less than 1% of women will experience three or more miscarriages and the reason it's important to know that is because if someone has had more than three miscarriages they need to seek help um i've had many women tell me my OBGYN doesn't really know what to do and that's because they're not really going to know what to do you need to see a specialist you need to see an RE and then an RE will be able to figure out who else you need to see like i have all these specialists i'm working with now um and i can post about it and outline what each one does but it's out of my OBGYN's hands and i'm actually really grateful that she stood up and said i can't do more for you yep. i i you're out of my week and yep. i respected her for that you know she Absolutely. tried and then could figure it out and then said you know what this is beyond my realm of expertise and i need you to go see somebody else and and that's that's the sign of of an excellent doctor it's the ones who know I, I, I actually can't help you. This is this is not my forte. This is beyond me. You need to find someone else. Those are the ones they're they're humble because they know exactly what they can and can't do and don't pretend to sort of try to figure it all out. Those are I, I those are exactly the people who all of you should be connecting to. If you feel that your own doctor for whatever reason is just not giving you the answers that you would have hoped for, then go find somebody else. Absolutely. Time and time again, that's one of my biggest things that I say. You have to self-advocate. You have to get informed. You have to seek answers, demand the answers. And if your medical team doesn't work for you, find another one. It's so important. Absolutely. Um, so, so, Lenny, tell us. So, who, um, who are like? How did you figure out? You know, which ways to go, and. Um, and, and who are the people who are in your life right now, medical staff, who are helping you to figure this out and then hopefully, God willing, going to be able to help you through a successful pregnancy? So I'm working with a perinatologist now. Um, I, have, I have a team. So I have my perinatologist. I think that's how you say it. I hope that's how you say it. I, it, it sounds good to me. Doctor. I'm the doctor. I'm the, I'm the doctor in the room, but it sounds good. Keep going. <laughs> high risk doctor. What that means yeah. is high risk doctor. Um, so high risk doctor, OBGYN, um, reproductive endocrinologist, and acupuncturist because I believe in a holistic approach as well. And unfortunately, there's only so much that within because of my body and my issues that I can do holistically. But I still want to implement that. Uh, it just gives me peace of mind and it makes me feel like I have some sense of control in it instead of just being prescribed things. Um, so I see an acupuncturist weekly. And that's also my one. I, I meditate every day, whether it's 15 minutes or more. But I, I make time to do that every day. And um, But my acupuncture appointment is one hour long. And that's an hour that I sit and meditate and manifest and visualize uh trying to bring forth all these things that i'm hoping for uh and 
Were those, were those, were those, were the meditations and the visualizations and all, all those pieces, the, the self care pieces, were, were those pieces things that you had in place in your life before all of this or that you discovered along the road and found to be helpful? Like, how did you get to those pieces? That's a great question. So I'm very, very blessed. My mother is a Reiki master. Wow. And she's very um, spiritual and has raised me with this concept of holistic life and energy and kindness and give and you shall receive um beautiful and so i think that that's definitely a part of me and but i'll say this i was skeptical about meditating my whole life it wasn't until recently that i actually implemented meditating as much as i do uh, because it just didn't make sense to me i'm just a, i don't know if it's a virgo thing <laughs> um because we can be very analytical and uh, I like proof. I'm very scientific. I need to know proof of things. Um, I'm not someone that, you know, you can tell something to and it's hard to convince me of things. Uh, but I did research on meditation and the power that it has physiologically on us. Um, and it made me a believer and I started to do more research on it to implement it into my life. And it's made a huge difference because I have anxiety now. Um, and that's not something that I've always had. Right. I, I mean, under understandably so with everything that you've been through. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, some people, uh, you know, my heart is with them deal with anxiety, uh, on the regular. That's just their life. Um, I am not, I have not been one of those people. So to me, it's new. It's something that I'm learning to cope with. Uh, and I have a background in therapy, so, um, but I always say I have the tools, but I don't have a magic wand. I'm still human and it takes effort every day. And that's why I do a lot of self care, um, because it makes it e easier to breathe. You know, um, everything I've gone through has put different weights on me and I'm just constantly trying to remove them and make the load lighter and lighter but it's it's a daily effort um if it's not one thing it's another we have triggers now i mean it just changes you you know i i, I want to go back to that but I, <laughs> I, I i but i want you to continue sharing the different pieces that you're doing now because i know a lot of there are a number of people that have messaged me and said that they they're also going through recurrent pregnancy loss and i know that you post a lot about it on your page but i mm -hmm. wanted to hear also just more about the other medical pieces like w what each person has worked through with you the different tests and the different ways to diagnose um what you ended up having absolutely so i'm really fortunate i have a friend um that's a neurosurgeon <laughs> And he, when I started going through, and I, I'm very, very lucky. I have a, a group of people in my life that I've called upon to ask questions and have helped me um, ask the right questions. Um, and he was adamant about testing for blood clotting disorders because of the experience I had with the losing the blood. And I, I told my doctor to check and she said that she did, but I don't know, there's so many panels that they can check for. Um, and just if you don't have APS, which is antiphospholipid syndrome, you might have another type of blood clotting disorder. Um, so you really, I, I can't say go get this test because there are so many blood panels, but I can say if you have symptoms similar to things that I've said, like way too much, uh, so let's, let's go backwards a little bit. Um, I have, people have asked me have you ever had any uh symptoms prior to being pregnant and the answer is yes but i didn't know it so the reason i say that is because i didn't understand what my periods were supposed to look like until i started working with an acupuncturist um, who specializes in fertility and she has uh walked me through different things and i've done my own research because of it and realized wow my periods have been telling me something my whole life and I just didn't know how to listen. So um, I have always had clotting. 
um, during my periods and I've always had a lot of pain and heavy, heavy heaviness. And I thought that that was normal. Um, I also thought that clotting was a good sign for whatever reason in my head. I thought that meant I had good lining, good uterine lining. Okay. <laughs> whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So that's what I thought. And, um, it turns out that I have coagulation because of my blood clotting disorder and clots are not a good sign. Also, lots of pain is not a good sign. I know that it's common and so women think that's just the way that it is, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's your body telling you something's going on. Yeah. And my acupuncture has helped me. I've, I've seen everything change. I have less pain, it's just more normal, like barely no clotting. I mean, I see a huge difference and I've only been doing it for, I'm going on five months now. Amazing. Um, but I do feel different. And also when I first walked in, it was after my third loss, when I finally, I'd, I've been seeing my acupuncturist for other things, but not targeted for fertility. And she kept telling me, you need to do it for fertility. I don't know why I was resistant because that's just me, I guess. <laughs> um, but I finally went in and started doing it. But when I went in, it was after my third loss and I was so, um, I was so sad. I was sad and I was depressed and I had lost like 10 pounds. And I, like I said, I'm already very petite. So that was a lot for my body. Um, I wasn't myself. I was really, I was struggling and I went in and I kind of fell apart in front of her and couldn't hold back the tears. And it's crazy to think about that now because I'm at such a different place. But at that point I was falling apart and she just, it was such a different experience than what I had been getting from the medical side because the medical side is just more clinical. That's just the way that it is. Um, and to have somebody just, she sat with me for an hour on top of the acupuncture before to just talk to me, listen to me, ask me questions. So what are you eating? How are you sleeping? What do you feel like? Why do you feel that way? How often do you feel that way? I mean, so many questions Amazing. about my health. And, and she's really been the only one that asked me about my period. No one else has asked me that. Not even my RE. <laughs> I've had wow. to say, Hey, I've noticed that I spot a little bit before my period. And I read that that might mean I have a shorter little phase and I need to get, you know, I might need progesterone. Can you check me for progesterone? Like that's me that I've had to do that. You know, yep. <laughs> sure. Why not? We'll test you, you know, yep. Um, but she, so she's helped me and I, I just, I'm so grateful for her. And I think that everybody needs some, you, you need a team. It doesn't take just one person. Okay. Uh, but she's, she's helped me a lot. And, um, so we did the blood panels, um, and then my RE. So I think a lot of people are hesitant to go to an RE at first because they just feel like, okay, now I'm. I don't know. I, I guess it's 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 hard. You you just feel like wow, we've come to this. Yes. Um, it's but it's a huge really emotional hurdle. Huge emotional hurdle. Like it's actually admitting that something is wrong. And it even though people may know that in their hearts, they they may not. It, it takes a lot for someone to make that first phone call to make that appointment. Absolutely, it does. It's hard, um, you know, to say I have to work with a reproductive endocrinologist. My OBGYN can't help me anymore. You feel a little defeated at first. Um, but then you can quickly turn that into a positive mindset of, okay, now I'm going to work with a person that can actually help me. Um, and we're going to get somewhere. And I've gotten so many more answers since working with my RE because she just put me in for a whole bunch of other tests that my OBGYN hadn't thought of. Um, and we got to the bottom of it. So I have also lower AMH than I should for my age, um, anti-malarian hormone. Um, I tested positive for the MTHFR. So my body doesn't necessarily process folic acid. So I need the non-synthetic form, which is folate. Um, so APS, low AMH, MTHFR, uh, what else? Oh, my progesterone's a little low. We just found that out. So I need to get on progesterone um, support. Uh, and I'm a healthy person that works out all the time and eats clean and does all the right stuff. Never would have thought. Right. I it can happen to anyone. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's people, you know, when, 
when people have healthy babies and when they have families and, and have one child after another, they and, and never experience any fertility issues whatsoever, whether it's with loss or, or infertility, the the concept to them that you know that it's hard to have a child like just doesn't exist and yet any of us in this process know there are a million things that have to go right in order for you to hold a baby in your arms at the end of 9 months a healthy baby in your arms at the end of 9 months and it's it's always completely mind blowing to me how just how how mysterious and how many things we do know already and how many things we still yet do not know about this process and it's it's just it's absolutely wild absolutely wild yeah i think i mentioned to you that my husband was conceived through ivf um oh, i actually and- i i didn't remember that or 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 you yeah. don't share it but either way yeah yeah Maybe. so and that was in the 80s you know, wow. and my mother-in-law and I talk a lot about it. And I'm very fortunate that I have her as a support. She's the only one in my life, really, you know, prior to making all these connections um, that really, truly relates to me and can understand me um, because she's been there. She went through four years of IVF treatments before she got my my husband. Wow. Um yeah, and she always tells me when I tell her everything I've learned, she she said, I didn't have access to any of those things. She didn't have a choice but to go in and whatever the doctor said. She didn't have Google. Right. She didn't have the internet. Right. I was going to say, we just had have, just have libraries, right? She had libraries, yeah. Right. Or word of mouth, talking right. to people, right. which we didn't do back then. That was, Correct. I mean, in the 80s, talking about that? No. Okay. So she was really on her own. And I, you know, I applaud her so much for her strength. And that's been something that's been hard too. It it took me some time to really, I mean, I love her. And so I've always let her in with it. But I I went through a period where I felt guilty letting her in about into our journey. Because I felt like I'm bringing her on this journey again. You know, I felt like I was, I was putting her through it again, if, if that makes sense. And I love her very much. She's, we're very close and I'm very grateful for that. You know, just the thought of like, I want to give her a grandchild. You know, she's, she's always wanted, she doesn't have any grandkids. Um, and she just, all her, uh, she's, um, her family's all Orthodox. So they all have kids. Everybody's got kids. You know, they're, all her, her siblings have kids and they're grown and they're having kids. You know, she's the only one that doesn't have grandkids yet. And I so badly wanted to give her that, you know, and the thought of having to bring her into this journey and letting her be a part of us and feel our pain with us. Cause she does. Um, of course. She calls us us her kids, you know, and for a long time, ever since I can remember, it's my kids. And when she talks about me, it's my kid, you know? So I very much have this relationship of like, she's, my mom I call her mom you know beautiful so that's an aspect of it too yeah yeah look I I mean and that's a real that's a real piece of it I I mean there there's so you know to to know that we're we're I mean of course like you're not like you're not purposely causing her harm but even to have that in the back of your head is just oh I I can't yeah well that's imagine yeah. That's another thing, you know. Um, so through this process, uh, I told you that my first pregnancy was after we got engaged. And then my second um, pregnancy was um, conceived during our wedding, um, which was great. Um, but it didn't work out. And and then my third pregnancy was shortly after during our honeymoon phase and right smack in the middle of COVID. Um, and just everything in our lives has changed. We we were supposed to go on a honeymoon that we spent a lot of time and money um, preparing for. We were supposed to go to Europe for five weeks and we planned it ourselves. Yeah, it was, let me tell you though, it was a, it was a dream come true that turned into a nightmare. <laughs> I, I um, can't even begin to imagine having to deal with all of the cancellations and the getting refunded if they would refund you. I, I can't even, oh my. Yeah. 
it was an absolute nightmare. And so it just went from like being on this high of we just got we got married and then a few weeks later found out we were pregnant and thought, okay, this is it. It's all going great. Now we have this amazing honeymoon we're going on in a couple months. It was supposed to be in May. We were on the top of the world. And then it just was like you know, crashing down. Um, so I think that's why I just felt so devastated this year. It was a lot of heaviness, you know. Look, it's 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 a it's a lot for anyone who's who's not going through any sort of fertility struggles. But I, I can't even. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone in this space is is dealing with their own different different challenges in regard to COVID. But I, I can't even. I, I guess the question is: is how did you? How do you, I mean, you are, you, you've made this choice to be public about your experiences right now when you're in the midst of everything. And and we obviously all know, like, Instagram is not real life. And, you know, I, I've seen you have incredibly gorgeous pictures of, you know, places that you've traveled and things that you've done and, you know, different scenery and so on and so forth. But in the midst of, like, you know, there's there's one post that has you know a, a, a screenshot of something that's that's absolutely beautiful, and then the next one is, I just lost my baby, and then the next like how how have you been able to manage all of these pieces, and how did you pull yourself up and pull yourself out of this, and still want to be able to share and give while you're still struggling? Um, well, the first thing is, um, when I first lost my first, um, pregnancy, I felt very isolated, which is extremely common for the women that go through this. I felt alone and I just didn't have the resources or anybody to talk to. And I felt like I was suffocating. Um, because in my life I was pretending like everything was fine this was before COVID this was last year and so there were birthdays and family events and I just went and had a smile on my face and acted I actually went to a wedding last year um, it came up in my memories um, on Instagram <laughs> one of my very good friends got married last August and I went to her wedding after I was in the hospital, the time that I told you that I had had the second DNC, um, a week later, I was at her wedding. Um, and I actually left early because I started to spot again and I was worried. So we went to the emergency room that night. Turns out everything was fine. It was just because I had just had surgery. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have pictures where I look, you know, really dolled up and we had a good time, but in the back of my mind, I was carrying all of this. Right. Um, it's, it's really, so I did that because of that, because I just felt like there's got to be other women out there that feel how I'm feeling, and I have to, I want to connect with them, and I think on top of that, I felt like I have tools. Um, I, I'm just very, um, by nature, an optimistic, positive person. And I knew that I was going to come out of this stronger. And I knew that I could use my tools that I had through therapy and my, my degrees to help people. And so I just, I think I just felt like this has to be a purpose for me. That was my silver lining. It just felt like I ha I'm going to find purpose through this. And my purpose is going to be to help women through this, to let them know I, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to show them you can get knocked down but you can get back up and life doesn't end here. Um, and like you said, you know, there's a post where it's me somewhere beautiful traveling because we travel a lot for work and for pleasure. And then it's, I had miscarriage and it, it's all real. It's all part of my life. And um, I think that, you know, I try to show the, the other parts of me because it's important for me that people see, um, that life is still beautiful and I, I acknowledge that life is still beautiful and I I'm so much more than just this and I have a husband that I love very much and we have a puppy and he's our baby for now and we travel and enjoy hiking we're avid hikers we love to be in the wilderness and 
I still want to live my life. I'm only 33 years old. I'll be 34 next month, but you know, I, I, I still have so much life to live. And I think what happened was I read an article once of a woman who said it took her like, I don't know, I think 12 years to conceive. Um, and th th she just felt like life wasn't life until she finally had this baby. And, I, and she said, I feel like I lost all those years because all I had was baby on the brain. And this was early on in my journey that I read that. And I just thought, no, I can't do that to myself. Because I, I, I think it's important for me to say, I, my life hasn't always been easy. My life is great now. I have an amazing husband. I have an amazing life. Really do it. It's really hard to get to where we're at. And I'm, I'm very, very blessed. But my, I, I didn't have that life growing up. You know, I have, I come from immigrant parents that came to this country with nothing. And, you know, I saw them work really hard. And I had to put myself through school and work full time and go to school full time and do it all. And I've had a lot of struggles. I've, I've had a lot of battles up against me. And I've had to fight to get to this place in my life. And I think that now that I'm here, I'm just not willing to give it up. You know, even if it's, over loss um that i honor my feelings i of course it hurts and it's hard but i refuse to give up all the things i've worked toward the happiness the joy that i finally have in my life uh, over the grief the grief has its place but it's not going to take over if that makes sense i i i'm like i i have chills like chills running like running up and down my arms it's it's that's that's what it's about like i i that that's what it's about for what it what the ideal should be about for everyone that's exactly it that like these years are so hard and they're filled with so many potential disappointments but so many potential happy moments as well and to completely you know sort of fill your life and 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 look at it only through one lens as opposed to the entire lens the all the colors of the world is really limiting yourself and i love that i i i, I everybody has to hear that like <laughs> i'm just i it, it's 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 one of the things that i i truly believe i mean it's so hard to do though like like for for 5 seconds like I just have to acknowledge that like it is so hard to be able to have that kind of perspective when you're knee deep in, in, in struggle. It is so hard to do that. But if you can, the way you have, it's just, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And you're such an inspiration to so many people who really, who need that and need to be reminded of that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm human. I have my moments, and that's so important yeah. for me. You know right. That? Yeah. Yeah. right. <laughs> but I keep getting back up because I deserve to. And that's, I think, one of my greatest missions through this is to make people feel like you need to get up because you deserve to get up. You deserve to keep walking forward. You don't deserve for this to be it for you. You don't deserve to carry that weight on you. You deserve to enjoy trying again, however that means. You deserve to enjoy your pregnancy, whatever that means. You deserve that. I mean, especially after the things that we go through, we deserve it a lot <laughs> um, because there's so much pain in this that when joy comes, you got to grab it. You got to grab it and hold on to it and really just embrace it and say, you're here. I've been waiting for you. And now that I have you, I need to hold on to you and really just feel you right now. So I think that that's my greatest mission. It's just, that's why I'm so real about it and so raw because I want people to see the tough side of it. I'm not trying to pretend like this is easy, but I'm saying I, I accept, I acknowledge it's hard, but it's not impossible. And it really boils down to your mindset. And the, you have to make it, you have to be determined to keep going and to find the joy in your life and to not allow this to just keep you down. It'll knock you down, but you got to get back up and you deserve that. And you have to convince yourself of that. Too many times I hear women say, but I can't, 
don't, it's, I know that it's so hard and I might say this and some people aren't ready to hear it. Some people don't want to hear that yet. And that's yep. okay. Yep. It's not your time yet. You need to grieve. Go ahead, honor that. But you will get to a point where you're like, I'm tired of feeling this way. I don't want to feel this way anymore. Is it possible for me to get out of this? Yes. And that's when I step in and say, yes, it is. Are you ready? Here's my hand. Let's go. You know? Absolutely. And I think the other piece that's really important here is that for every person, the, like, the let's go piece is not necessarily the same. For some people, the let's go is, I'm done with this. I I've made peace with it. It's not happening. I'm okay. I can't put myself through this anymore. I, I, I need to leave this, this part of my life behind and move on. And for Absolutely. other people, and, and whether you have children or not, some people make that choice regardless of whether they have children. And that's a very valid, okay, absolutely a, a choice to be respected and to be validated because that's what they need. But then there are others who want to keep going and keep striving and keep going and fighting for that baby whenever that baby will come and they're willing to just go to the end of the earth for that and that's also a path that needs to be respected and cherished and supported and so i i i love the way you like you you really frame that that you you know it's about sort of grabbing life by the hand and saying i'm i i i'm struggling and i hear that but i'm still going to live my life whatever the decision at the end of the day is. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I, I feel different ways on different days. Right. Of so course. right now I'm at a place where we're trying again. And so I'm at a place where I, I have to believe in it and just wholeheartedly be in it for me. Right. That's, that's what I have to do for myself. Yep. Um, but you know, I've had my moments in the past after loss where I've said, okay, I'm going to try these many more times. And if it doesn't work, then at some point I want to just live my life. Right. Um, you know, and I've had to, that's for me also, not everybody wants to have those conversations, but I had to have that conversation with myself and with my husband because it just gave me clarity to know that that was even an option, you know, and, and to just give myself permission to say that if at some point I just decide that I'm ready to stop, that that's okay too. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going in wholeheartedly hoping for the best. Uh, and I keep com trying to convince myself, no, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because that's where I'm at right now because I'm trying. Right. Uh, and I just cross each bridge as I get there and readjust my mindset. You know, my mindset right now needs to be that we'll see what happens at the next bridge and then I'll adjust again and so forth and so forth. You know, you, you, you change a lot. You have to be flexible through this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Libby, I, 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 I am inspired by you. I am in awe with what you've been able to do with, everything that you've been through and, and try to take all of those pieces and give to others on your page. I, 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 it's so important, you know, each of us, I, you know, there are a bunch of people commenting here and, you know, we all, a lot of us sort of are in this sphere of different people that we interact with on Instagram and we are each, you know, carving out a little space and, and giving over sort of our truths just to be able to reach more people and, and give this over. And your, your peace and your voice is, is so important here. And I'm just grateful that we got a chance to meet and that you were able to share a little bit of, of who you are and what makes you tick and, and what drives you. And I, I'm so inspired, so inspired. Yes, Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I hope that I was able to explain my journey. I know that, I mean, I think we can talk about this for a long time. We could probably talk about this for hours and there's, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm trying to sum up, you know, uh, almost, um, it's been over a year now, which isn't much compared to a lot of women, but 
for me, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to sum that all up in an hour, um, right. which isn't easy to do. So if I left anything out or if there's questions that people have, I would love to connect with them. Um, so you're welcome to contact me on my page um, at linspired.living. And I'm happy to answer any questions that could help you in any way, whether it's to just get through your process or if you have medical questions. I'm not a doctor, but I can share what I've learned um, so that maybe you can just ask the right questions or do your own research uh, more narrowed. Um, but I just hope that I was able to help people because one of the things that I have a hard time finding is resources on the social media platform for recurrent pregnancy loss. I see a lot of things for infertility and things like that, and I'm grateful for it. I think that they all have their place in this community, but I just don't see enough for miscarriage or recurrent pregnancy loss. And that's why I'm that much more outspoken because I feel like it's something that needs to be talked about, needs to be normalized. We need to spread awareness and we need to let people know they're not alone um, and, and build strength. Um, in the community. Absolutely. And um, I, I'm i going to speak to you offline about this, but there's an organization that I just spoke to the other day, specifically geared to uh, towards research um, on recurrent pregnancy loss. So I, I'll tag them here as well in this when, when I put this up. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll also put the two of you together. But Linny, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Everyone, please reach out to her. She's an incredible wealth of knowledge and support and inspiration. And um, and look, we'll have to do this again. That's clear, right? I would <laughs> love so that. Yes. I'm in the beginning of my journey, really. So there will be lots to learn and talk about as, you know, hopefully I become pregnant and then go through pregnancy after loss and all of that and everything that that entails. So I would definitely love to do that. Um, later on so Amazing. thank you so much for the opportunity i really appreciate it and thank you to everyone sending everybody and we're love. all praying for you Lenny. we're all praying praying for you thank you so all much right. all right good night good night everybody good night, good night everybody thank you